All right. So the first question I have for you is how long have you been trading? Let's see. I started like actually trading in 2018, but my first like introduction to it was 2015. And um, I want to say I had one of my friends made a couple thousand overnight and he told us about it. And so we were like, man, what? So we ended up like trying it out and just playing around on demo and never really like got into it because, you know, we didn't have like a strategy, a trading plan, or education, nothing, just buying and selling, just anything, you know, just going, whatever. Just, I was in school and college then. So I didn't really like put too much into it because I was making beats back then. I still do now here and there, but like, that was my focus. 2017 comes around and my dad ended up joining uh, I Am Academy through because he was already kind of into like network marketing and stuff but he he remembered that i told him about the trading thing back in like 2015 maybe 2016 and so when it came up he joined i am academy 2017 and then uh told me about it because i told him about the trading thing back in 2015 and uh he was like you might be interested in it or whatever and so like i joined it but never really like got into it because i was like i had just graduated and was trying to figure life out and stuff <laughs> and so by 2018 i started like really looking into it and getting into it and so I probably loaded up my first account with like maybe 200 and probably maybe got up to like 220 and then like lost some and then ended up probably withdrawing it just to pay a bill. And so this was 20, this was the beginning of 2018. And so um, I've been kind of trading since 2018, but like off and on during the pandemic, I kind of took a break because you know, that was just a hard time for, for most people. Right. And then so I was 2018 joined and then uh, 2019, I ended up finding out about the trade house. So I like left my old group and then born in the trade house. And uh, from there, it was like 2020, I mean, 2019, 2020. And then I ended up probably, I think like towards the middle of 2020, I took a break just because, you know, the pandemic or whatever. And then ended up uh, just taking some time off. And then I'm going to say 2021, I kind of got, probably got back into it, but just timing wasn't right. And so let's see, by 2022, I ended up, okay, that's what happened. I ended up going to school. I went to, I went back to school during the pandemic for audio engineering just because I was like, you know, things are hard. I needed to find like a backup plan, backup career or whatever. Mm -hmm. So and then 2021, that was 2021 going, I finished school, audio engineering school, 2022. That was when I was like, needed a way to make some money because I was like, you know, this engineering thing is like, I'm not getting paid for it. I'm interning right now. So after interning for like six to eight months, started to fall behind on bills and I was like, man, I need, I need a, I need a way to like catch up, you know, make some money and stuff. So I was like, you know, I, I, I do have trade and I, I still have a background in that. And so, uh, ended up getting back into it, like around like maybe September, October is just kind of looking back into it, trying to find like a, like a new, another, you know, group or whatever. And so I didn't want to join. I am just because like I had already done that. And just that, I don't know, you know, you know, the whole story behind that. <laughs> <laughs> I do said if i were to join i am again it would be up under you and so like that's how i ended up getting your subscription through youtube because i was like you know he cool he's not what i am anymore but i still if i was going to join it again it would have been under under your group for sure yeah no i appreciate that and actually by the time that i left earlier in 2023 um that was 100 percent of my students were hey i was in but then i left i waited six months and now i'm in under you i'm like oh um, well, that's good, man. I'm glad you found the trade house. Um, sounds like your your dad was, you know, a, um, a good, I guess, introduction, you know, uh, or can you know, connection rather to the trade house, to myself, and into the current um, Smart Money Stokes community. So that's really cool. So, and I feel like you're a student who has been trading longer than than most, you know. So that's 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 a pretty pretty long time. In your trading, um, you know, since what well, you said originally 2015, but you know, over the last what eight years or so, what has been your biggest breakthrough in trading or some of your biggest breakthroughs in trading? Doing the same things over and over. Like sometimes, you know, you kind of variate or like, I don't know what, fluctuate, kind of like tweak things a little bit. But mm -hmm. once I start like the same things over and over, look for the same things every day, show up at the same times. Like I used to wake up at like 10 o'clock and try to, you know, trade, you know, whatever. But it was just like nowadays I get up at least like an hour and a half before a New York session. But I would say my biggest breakthrough would be when I started 2022, I started it. I just had a whole different mindset when I came into it because before I was just like so focused on, you know, the money and just just trying to be right versus like actually like 
taking the time to learn a strategy, really get into like price action and like having like specific things that I look for instead of just kind of trying to take any any regular trade. And uh, another thing would be, I would say more recently was when I started to trade like smaller accounts, because before I've been I've been trying to do the challenges for like a year. And this is like I started my first time was maybe like December last year. And so it took me a year to finally pass. I failed to be at least like, oh, I don't I don't know. It's embarrassing, but maybe like 30, 40, 30, 40 of them. Oh, wow. Yeah, it, it took a minute. And so like in that case, I feel like I failed so fast and often that I learned a lot through those mistakes. Biggest breakthrough, I would say, was when I started to trade smaller accounts because, you know, I've been doing a lot of like personal development and stuff. And so like I realized that those big accounts, my financial, what was it? it was the book Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. They were talking about it like financial blueprint. And they were like, my financial blueprint is pretty much not set for those big accounts yet because, you know, I haven't had that type of success or they're like, if you get in, run into a lump sum before you're ready for it, you're going to lose it type of deal. And so like just really working on my relationship with money and seeing how that kind of like that mindset translate into trading because like in real life, you know, like overspend or just like not really keep up with it, not really like save. And so mm -hmm. once I started to kind of work on my relationship with money, that kind of helped a lot too with, with trading. Yeah. I think that was T. Harv Eker who, um, who had the million is right. The, the millionaire secrets of the millionaire mind, right? Pretty good book. Yeah. It's so old too. Oh my God. It's, it's old. <laughs> um, but it's pretty good. So we, we talked about your biggest breakthrough. What was your biggest struggle then? And how did you overcome it? My biggest struggle will used to be like over leveraging, over trading, and then not stopping when I'm in profit. And so like, you know, you just kind of get like euphoric, overconfident and try to take one more trade over revenge trading would be another big one too. like trying to get that money back. You lose just a just a little bit of profit. Then you try to double up and get the money back and just like oh, yeah. it's an emotional decisions versus like logical. Once I started to think more logically about it, like, yeah, I could jump back in, but this is not, I don't see an actual like entry model or something that jumps out at me to get in. You know, I would just kind of like, just, oh, just try to get the money back. And that just leads you down the cycle of like, okay, you take one loss, now you take another one. And then it's just like, you go down that like loop of just the most decisions. All right. So now that you are funded, right? Congratulations, by the way. What can you tell us about your current trading strategy that you used uh, to become funded? Okay, so right now, like, I've been learning a lot of, like, smart money concepts and uh, just, like, like I, I tune into your live streams. There's, like, two other people that I listen to, but more so recently, I've been, like, kind of focusing on what you've been saying. Yeah. So, well, who else do you, who else do you uh, listen to? Okay, so there's two people. You know, you know uh, one of them, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure you know him. You know Matthew, uh, Matthew ACTG. Mm, it, I know I know a lot of Matthews, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. Matthew uh, from Trade House used to be with like Iffy, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt the yeah. from California, Matthew. Yep, yep. That's oh yeah, guy. yeah. And uh, the other guy I would say is Bash. His 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 channel is called like Inner Wealth. I don't know if you know him or not, but he's he's basically with Matthew, and so. When I joined uh, after the audio engineer, audio engineering school, um, 2022, that's when I joined uh, Matthew's group because I was just uh, on Instagram and saw them like, you know, catching catching snipes and stuff. So I was like, let me see what his, uh, you know, channel is about. And so like, that's where I kind of got like a good foundation of like smart money concepts, accumulation, distribution, like imbalances, points of interest, all that, like liquidity, buying below lows, selling above highs. Right. And got that like a good foundation of that and then like i want to say i started tuning into your streams about like when is this it? december now so maybe like uh august september ish and so oh, ever okay. since then, like really click and so like the other guy i listened to bash he his his channel is inner wealth and uh he he, he does a lot of like ict and smart money concepts but mm -hmm. only like uh listen to a little bit of the ict stuff because it can get complicated and like you and matthew keep it really simple that's what i like about you all it's like mentors yeah no and we can definitely appreciate that um yeah me and matthew we used to stream uh a lot back in the day like years and years ago this is like 2019 2020 um i had a lot of good times with them and you know i haven't been a part of their group but i know matthew so i know they definitely have uh some good work over there and that's great and that is actually one good point that you brought up having multiple mentors right because i've always said like look 
I do pride myself on being a mentor, but that doesn't mean I should be your only one. Right. So, um, no, that's really good. And, and they definitely know what they're doing over there. So well, that's great. And, and yeah, I'm not going to touch too much on the ICT stuff, but it, it does get very complicated. The names are so complex and that's really one of the main reasons why I say that, um, that names don't matter. Context does, right? Because you could have a whole dictionary on different things where it doesn't need to be that complicated. If you understand the context, you can simplify the name, right? Like the Y slime model. It's just your stop loss is my entry. And sure, that is complicated. What does that mean? It means buying below old lows, selling above old highs. You know, it doesn't have to be super complicated. The mitigation model, right? The mitigation, what is its function? Is to mitigate. That's why it's called a mitigation. Boom. You know, it's 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 not called something abstract because it doesn't need to be, you know? So, but anyway, before I go on another rant, I want this video to be about you, brother. Uh, so, well, really, for, for the last question that I have, and then we can get into whatever you want to get into, but for anybody that's watching this video who wants to become a better trader or even a funded trader in the future, is there anything that you would like to tell them personally? I would say, like, uh, once I started to keep a journal, I've been journaling for, like, a year, and, like, I don't do the best job of, like, reviewing it and going over it, but I journal every day, like, either, like, my my trades or, like, my mindset, what I was thinking or where I went wrong at for the day. Like, took this one trade, trying to make a little extra, and then it just went downhill from there, went on tilt or, you know, got emotional, revenge trading. And so, like, having that journal really just getting the thoughts out and, like, more so lately, I've been trying to, like, review it before my before I trade so that way I'm not making the same mistakes over and over. But let's say, I would say journaling, say if you are going for the bigger accounts and not having success, I didn't have a, start having success with the challenges until I started doing like smaller accounts, because I don't know, it's just like a, a psychology thing, like mindset wise, you just kind of have a lot more to play with. And if you aren't ready for it, it really will like, it really can, can have an effect on it. So once I started trading smaller accounts and using like lower risk, I would say that helped. And then uh, one big thing I want to say is doing like I dove into a lot of like trading psychology, like from Mark Douglas. There's a guy Brett Steinberger. Have you ever heard of him? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. Okay, so Brett Steinberger, and then a little bit of Jared Tindler. Oh uh, yeah, I, I do know him. I actually, I actually reached out to him um, when he launched his book either last year or the year before, and um, I, I had read like half of it, and I was like, oh, this is really good, and I reached out to him, and I was like, hey, this is awesome, like this is a really good book. And he got back to me and it, it was pretty cool. And I, I think he does some work with Top Step. He does um, streams for Top Step all the time. I mean, like I've seen the notifications and stuff. I, I haven't really tuned in, but um, but I know he's a he's a gem. I've heard a lot of good things about Jared. Yeah, he's pretty good. And so like the biggest things I would say, the biggest thing from Mark Douglas was I would say was thinking in probabilities and understanding that like every trade is random you don't know what's going to happen next. You literally just have to kind of like have faith in your system and trust it. And like you said, have that context, having context will really, really change the game. Cause it's like, I feel comfortable putting my risk on the table or leaving it there. Cause I'm like, price shouldn't be drop below this point or go above here because we've already swept the lows, respected like order flow, you know, all that kind of stuff. And then with Brett Steinberg, he's more so a trading psychologist that got into trading versus, you know, Mark Douglas, he was a trader. He was a trader that got into psychology. And so, like, I like listening to both of them because there's, like, both sides of the of the spectrum. And with Brett Steinberger, his big thing is he he has a bunch of different things. But, like, he has, like, the big thing that stuck out to me was, like, he's, like, you got to find out what triggers you in the market. Like, for instance, whether it's taking a loss or, in my in my case, taking a loss will trigger me, too. But, like, impulsive moves used to trigger me to, to just jump in, you know, FOMO. And so, like, nowadays, when I see a big impulsive move, I'm, like, okay, let me wait for an imbalance to form. And then I'll get in on that retracement. Once it, you know, once it retraces, I'll get in like on the way back up type of deal versus like chasing the market. And I still get caught chasing every now and then, but it's not like as bad as it used to because, you know, no, like, nobody's like perfect. But, right. But with Jared Tendler, the one big thing that he said to me, well, not to me specifically, but I listen to a lot of like the top self stuff just because I'll tune into the live stream sometimes. But he was like, uh, you can't expect to make money every day. Like, that's a that's a big thing. He was saying, I was like, yeah, that 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 kind of changed the game for me too. And just like, and what I'll do when I when I get onto the charts, like I'll mark up and then just like let price action start to play out. And I'm like, okay, we're going bullish, we're going bearish. Let me start to look for entries in versus like 
having like a, a specific bias for the day, you know, because the market can do whatever it wants. So like I'm just really going off of like price action order flow, like liquidity is still open and like mm -hmm. unmitigated points of interest and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. And you know, that's that that kind of reminds me of of um I don't want to say a debate, but there's this point that trading, you know, some people think that trading psychology is the most important. Other people think that your strategy is more important, but in all fairness, they're, they're all pretty much equal. But what I will say is I think increasing one helps increase the other. So like what I'm saying is when you understand how the market works, like, so for example, um, moving from liquidity to liquidity, right? So we understand, okay, if liquidity has been taken out, and we're on the way to opposing liquidity. My psychology now is okay. I can play a stop that I know is unlikely to hit. It could, but it's just unlikely, right? So that having that context makes it easier to place that trade because I know that the probabilities are stocked. I mean, you saw what happened on NASDAQ on Friday, right? We made a case for such a heavily one-sided market. It shouldn't go down. It's our strongest index. You see this liquidity sweep, you see X, Y, Z, and we have liquidity resting up here. There's no justification to go lower and there's an abundant number of reasons why it should go higher, right? So what did it, it didn't get to the level that we looked for, but it did tap into the highs, right? It tapped into that liquidity that we we're anticipating. So, and you know, that's just one example, of course, but it's like, is the most recent example, but it's like so easy to say, okay, in the beginning, I didn't understand the market. So my, my psychology is bad because what if it runs to my stop loss, right? Because you don't know what you're doing. But yeah. when you have a solid strategy or foundation, you're like, okay, it shouldn't go to my stop loss because of X, Y, Z. And then you take that trade and then it actually goes your way or maybe spends a little bit of time, but then goes your way. And you're like, oh, wow. I'm a trader now. Like <laughs> this is finally, I'm finally starting to see the fruits of my labor. Right. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God, this is so awesome. So, you know, just to reiterate my point, understanding the market, I do think will help your psychology, you know, um, kind of like in, in lockstep to a degree. So when people say that one thing is more important than another, I kind of disagree because at the end of the day, it does come back to um, the Successful Traders Trio. That video I made, that was the first speech I gave in Houston, I think in 2020 or 2021. You know, it was Larry Williams actually who said that uh, every trader basically needs three things. The psychology side, the money management side, and then a winning strategy. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, if you need all three, it's kind of like a step stool or um, a ring light right? Or a tripod rather, where you've got your three legs, you take one of them away, it's done, right? So having all three is necessary, then all three are equal. So they're each 33.33% equal, right? And then that last 0.01 is just spread. You know what I mean? So, uh, but anyways, it's been a great interview, man. Um, if there's anything else that you want to talk about or discuss uh, for this YouTube video, then now is the time, man. Okay, I guess one thing I may have missed, I didn't I didn't have a lot of success trading Forex for whatever reason, but when I started trading futures, it just started to click more because you can't be as reckless. Like like you said, one of those videos you said, like how to not get your face ripped off, like <laughs> you will rip your face. <laughs> we will rip your face off because like it's 20 points. I mean, it's like $20 a point basically versus like on a, you know, Forex, you can kind of use lower risk, use more or whatever, but it's like, the, well, if you trade uh, uh, minis, but I've been trading micros on the funded account because uh, mm -hmm. well, I did a little bit of drawdown last week because I was out of town and I was like, let me see if I can get this payout by the end of the week. And then, you know, started out good, but towards the end of the week started like, you know, just making bad decisions. So I uh, ended up getting a little bit back, just going to piece it, you know, slowly take it, take it slow and get out of drawdown. Cause I'm like, I feel so much more confident like that I can do it versus like back then it was like, man, I gotta, you know, I might not make it, but like, I'm, I'm a lot more confident as a trader now, just because of like the context, the strategy, the consistency It's like more often, more days than not, I'll make some money, but it's just some days I'll either not stop or just, you know, you're not going to be a hundred percent every day. So 
some days I just, you know, some days it's out of it. And I'm trying to get better about learning when not to trade because that's a big thing too. Like, mm-hmm. days like the market may be like choppy. There may be news coming up, so it's not moving as much or it could just be a range in day. And yeah. so uh, just be paying attention to like the market. Like the market only has, I feel like the market only has like so much energy. It's only going to move so much per day. And then like you only have so much like mental energy as well. Like you're only going to make so many good decisions. You get like mental fatigue and like, Oh, discipline. Yeah. I find myself trading like from 9 30 to like 10 30. That's like my best. Like I that hour is like I sit down and can at least find, you know, one or two good trades between that time. And my strategy is mostly like scalping. Like I, I use, you know, all the concepts from you, Matthew, Bash. You all are more like intraday like traders. You I respect y'all so much for holding those trades. Like that's once I get to that point, I'll be a lot, a lot more profitable. But for right now, I'm like, you know, it's working for me. I got funded. I'm having more consistency. So now that's like the next step to like just build on what I'm I'm doing already and like not not focusing on the money but still being aware of it so that way you don't you know with these challenges and these accounts you got to be within these risk parameters and stuff so yeah oh matter of fact I got one more question for you so because you brought up the risk parameters of um, a funded account do you think that the trading rules um, provided by the top step combine do you think trading within those parameters has made you a better trader or do you think it's like the same? What, what what do you think? I think it's definitely better because like, I think you can usually it's like between two to 3% of the account that you can lose overall. And so like, I, I feel like it's made me better, more like better at managing risk, not over leveraging. And like one thing I used to do was like over leverage and over trade. Like, you Ooh. can't do both. Like <laughs> you can't do both. You got to pick one if you want to do it. <laughs> yeah. But, like, <laughs> right. Both, you're you're out of the game like super quick. And so like with those futures, it moves so quick and so fast. Like I literally hit, like lower my risk, and I'll start to scale in more so than just try to put on a big order at once. And so mm-hmm. like I feel like the risk parameters are they help you they help you like get more tighter with your risk and like management and daily limits and loss limits because with forex you know with the forex challenge accounts they give you what like five percent a day drawdown and eight percent eight to ten percent overall and so like some days i would just i would go down four percent in one day and it's like you know now you gotta overcome all those losses dig yourself out that hole and so like with top step i've been more so like taking it slow and just more so not trying to do too much too quick right oh that's good man that's really good so if you guys are looking um into getting a top step challenge. Yeah, I don't have like an affiliate link or anything, but you know, um, I, I just have heard that they do have really strict rules, you know, and, and some people like it, some people don't, but you know, I'm, I'm glad that it's made you a better trader. So that's awesome. But that is going to be it guys for this video. Zay, thank you so much for being here. Congratulations again on being funded. If you got some value, drop a like on this video. Um, leave a comment for Zay if you if you guys have any questions, he might be able to you know comment back or or whatever. So thanks again for being here, and I will see you in the next video.